Hey gang, welcome back. If you are coming back, you know who I am. If not, and this is your first visit, I am the Articulate Grunt. Welcome to my mo Monday morning show. It is the 11th. And let's get going. First thing I'd like to do is send out a job well done to Megan Vogel. Megan Vogel was competing in the state of Ohio High School Division Three Track and Field Championships. And having won the 1600 meter competition, was competing in the 3200 meter competition when a fellow competitor collapsed on the track. Megan stopped and picked up Miss Arden McMath and helped carry her across the finish line, thus keeping her from being disqualified and her team from lose, losing out on, a, on all her points and progression that thus far. When asked what she what she had done, she said she just had just reacted naturally. That's probably one of the best answers I've heard in a long time. Anything like that. So, I just want to say a job well done to Miss Vogel, and a thank you to the judges because you see, to touch whether it's to help or hinder a fellow athlete in a, in a track and field competition like that is an automatic disqualification. The judges, however, seeing what she did, chose not to qualify either competitor and just to let them continue on. So, a big job well done to, to Ms. Megan Vogel, and a thank you to the judges for having a properly human decision rather than the decision we see a lot these days, which is, oh, the book says this, so that's what we're doing. Moving on from there, though, Mr. Gabriel Vergara was released Thursday from the hospital in Mexico City. Only not a big thing that Mr. Vergara was the first double arm transplant patient in Latin America. That's right, double arm transplant. I didn't even know we could we had the technology until I heard about this. I did some some research and found that the first was actually Mr. Karl Merck in Germany, 54-year-old farmer who had lost both arms in a farm accident and had been six years as a double arm amputee. Now, leaving the hospital, Mr. Vargas said it was absolutely amazing that he could start to feel the feeling in his new fingers already, though the doctors say it's most likely ghost feelings because Apparently the nerves grow back at like 0.4, you know, four tenths of an inch per month. And Mr. Vargas' arms had been amputated just below the elbows. So he's got at least a good foot to go there. But still, it's medically amazing. For your information, the first planned double arm transplant patient in the U.S., is a Miss Katie Hayes of Texas and is planned for some time this year. Now, two things. One, this is not some minor surgical thing. It takes an estimated 15 hours and five surgical teams of approximately 40 personnel total, 40 people, 15 hours in three separate surgical wards to perform one of these. One team is literally getting the, donat you know, the donated arms, usually from an organ donor, and then you're moving across. Well, another team is getting the recipient prepped. It's 15 hours of surgeries. And an amazing thing for Mr. Mark, it's been four years for him, and he now rides a bike. He lifts weights. He's able to wash and bathe himself, eat on his own. <laughs> and as he claims, is the most important thing, when he gets an itch, he can scratch, scratch it himself. He also goes to the bathroom by himself. Well, this is just kind of a doubly amazing thing for me because... I spent almost three years in medical recovery after injuries I sustained in Iraq back in 2006. And I've seen 
so many brothers and sisters in uniform who have lost limbs. And if we can make this technology more readily accessible, more of a everybody's aware we can do it, then how many of my brothers and sisters in arms can we at least physically restore? So the mental wounds never go away. But how many can we physically restore and help out? Give me your thoughts and comments down below. Hit the, hit the, hit the like or dislike. Subscribe if you want to. And take care of yourself. Keep your heads low. I'll see you next time.